All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. Phil here live on today's gameplay stream. A full day of streaming here ahead for all of you. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2019. Welcome everyone to the gameplay stream for the day, the first of two. Um, sorry for technical difficulties. If you're watching on YouTube, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you're watching on Twitch, uh, my mic wasn't working. So I had to restart OBS and now everything's fine. Hopefully that'll be the last technical difficulty of the day. So what are we doing today? Well, oh man, ladies and gentlemen, today we are doing something that has been, uh, something that's, that's been a part of my legacy, let's put it that way, since I have been doing video game playthroughs. Um, in general, you know, this game that we're about to play today is part of a series that is a long-standing series of a big cult following and, you know, had many other spinoffs and sequels and the like, and I've played three games in this series before, and people really seemed to enjoy it when I did it. However, this was a long, long, long time ago. The series I'm speaking of is Phoenix Wright. Um, it was back in the day, <clears throat> before I live streamed, when I actually originally started playing the Phoenix Wright games. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and then Phoenix Wright Justice for All, and then I played Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton, on the Nintendo 3DS when it was a hot new release in uh, the fall, the hardcore gaming season one year when it came out. Um, and people seem to like when I play these visual novel uh, style games, all right? I remember that people uh, enjoy me not only, you know, going through it and reading all the dialogue, which I should call out that I do do that. Um, when I play the Phoenix Wright games, I read all the dialogue because I have viewers who are uh, vision impaired, and or cannot just seriously stare at the screen all day reading, and they want to still enjoy the playthrough without having to sit there and read subtitles, okay? So when I play Phoenix Wright, I read out all of the dialogue, and in the past, I have done some voice acting, which I wouldn't even call it that. Basically, me just doing some inflections to my voice and maybe an accent here or there um, for certain characters in the games, Okay. Um, but it's been a long, long time since I played a Phoenix Wright game. The last one, like I said, was Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton, and when was that? I mean, I, I think it was 2015. I could be wrong. Maybe it was 2016. But you're talking years ago, right? And so, uh, you might be saying, why on earth is Phil playing Phoenix Wright today? What's going on? Um, <clears throat> wow, it was 2014? Holy shit. It was 2014. I had no idea it was that long ago. So, four and a half years ago was the last time that I played a Phoenix Wright game. Damn. <clears throat> wow. Okay, so time flies, huh? Because I remember sitting here on this very couch, playing that game and, and doing and narrating and everything. I remember the ridiculous plot line with the witches and the town that was changing and stuff. It was really weird. But anyway. um, Anyway. And I last played Justice for All Case 4 in January 2014. So actually, in the mainstream line of these games, the last game that I played was January 2014, so five years ago. God damn. I mean, a lot has changed in five years. Let's not lie. Let's not, not be, you know, silly here. Let's be honest. A lot has changed in five years. You know, my office set up the way that I stream. You know, a lot has changed over the years. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean... That there aren't people who are long-standing viewers and fans or people who stumbled upon my Phoenix Wright playthroughs on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, over the years. You know, that's the good thing about what I do. I archive everything. Everything I've ever done can be viewed on the internet right now. It's, you know, people go back over the years. Oh, I'm going to just watch something old that Phil did. Oh, wow, he played Phoenix Wright, you know. And you check out that playthrough. You're like, holy crap, this is interesting. So different from the modern style of what Phil does. Um, so you may be saying... Um, what you know? Why on earth am I playing Phoenix Wright today? Well, there's two reasons primarily. All right, first of all, because last year, yes, that's right, last fall, we did a patrons' choice event. What that meant is that if we hit a certain number of subscribers here on the channel, people who had pledged to my Patreon at Patreon.com/forward/slash/DarkSidePhil nominated and voted on games for me to play, and it just so happens that Phoenix Wright: Trials of Tribulations ended up winning this poll. Okay. Now, at the time, I did not play the game. Instead, I played something else. And, in fact, I'm trying to remember what it was. I can't even remember what the hell it was that I played. Um, 
And you might say, well, why didn't I play it? Well, I didn't play it because there was already an announcement that there was going to be a Phoenix Wright HD trilogy that was going to be released for modern consoles in the near future. It didn't At that time, it didn't have a release date, but you know, it was thrown out there that there was going to be this collection. And I said, well, it makes more sense for us to wait for that collection. I'm sure the collection's probably going to not only have better graphics, but it might have modern amenities. Like, oh, maybe it'll have save states, or maybe it'll have better save points. Because if you remember, one of the most, I, I don't want to say annoying, but one of the most dated things about the Phoenix Wright series is that if you get a critical choice wrong during a case, it's not like you can just go back and load a checkpoint. You have to go back to like the beginning of a giant dialogue segment. And it's annoying if you have to go through like 10 more minutes of dialogue and several other choices to get back up to where you were in that case. And that's happened to me a bunch of times. Okay, it has. So, I was thinking that this game would be much better to be played during this modern collection. But at the time, we didn't know what it was. So I said, all right, we'll put it on hiatus. And we're going to do it, okay? Um, well, guess what? Now, the collection is out. It just came out this last week when I was in Connecticut. Um, so, obviously, I wasn't able to play it on, on release day. But it's out. And I said, all right, well, this week, that's it. We're starting it up. We're going to do Phoenix Wright. So, yeah, starting today, major stream, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Now, here's the thing, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, um, the truth of the matter is... That this game is going to be insanely long. And we all know that. Phoenix Wright games typically, on average, go between 25 to 40 hours long depending on how quickly you can beat them. And if you get stuck and you have to replay things or, whatnot, or the like. Plus, I'm reading out all of the dialogue. I'll be reading it all. And since I'm reading out all the dialogue, um, that also means it's going to be a longer playthrough. Okay? Um... So, FYI, this is probably going to be a playthrough that's going to be going on as part of my downtime slash chill stream content for quite some time. It's not always going to be the main gameplay stream. In fact, I can tell you guys right away, after today, I don't even know if it will be a main gameplay stream again or if it'll just be all night streaming, okay? Um, reason being, I am well aware that these JRPG-style games are very divisive amongst my viewing audience. Sometimes some people love them. But the vast majority of my viewers don't come by for these style of games. And they prefer to watch me play hot new releases or action-based games, etc. And so that's primarily what I try to tend to steer the, the earlier, longer gameplay streams towards. Okay? But I said, hey, you know what? Um, being that this is the first day I'm playing it, I'll play it as the, the big premiere four-plus hour stream. And we'll go from there. Alright? So that's the deal, what we're doing today. Now few things the crew ground rules number one i don't know if i'm doing voice acting for this you know five plus years ago when i played phoenix wright versus professor layton you know almost you know six seven years ago when i played the original phoenix wright i what i did was very different i was recording offline for most of this which means i was only talking during you know recording sessions now i'm talking to you guys constantly every moment the stream is on i'm talking with you and it ends up being sometimes 8 to 10 hours of straight talking. And it's very taxing on my voice. And just doing regular gameplay streaming a lot of the times, so my voice is shot by the end of the day. Can you imagine if I'm doing voice acting for 4 plus hours in a at a tear? How, how that's going to work out? Um, so I will be reading all the dialogue. But I don't know if I'm going to be doing different voices and everything for each character or whatever. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out. I'm afraid if I do that... Uh, I'm going to lose my voice. In fact, you may not realize this, but originally when I played the original Phoenix Wright games, I did lose my voice. It was actually, I think, I want to say it was try, it was uh, Justice for All, but I lost my voice for like two, three days when I was doing one of them. It was really bad. And I don't want to get into that situation again because we're now in the midst of a very busy gaming season. We've got hot new releases coming out next week. I can't lose my friggin' voice for the sake of doing voice, uh, you know, voice acting and inflection in my voice and, and, and accents and stuff to play this playthrough, okay? So we shall see. We shall see how it goes. And we'll go from there. But I'm not promising that I'm going to do voice acting. With, you know, I'm definitely reading all the dialogue, though, all right? The other thing is, as I said, um, this is very different today than the way I used to do stuff. And I realized that this is an interactive stream. The good news is this game is all dialogue. It's like, a, a you know, it's one of the visual novel games. That means there's tons of opportunity for me to interact with you guys. So don't worry 
if you have, you know if you're cheering something you're tipping and you want your shout out you're gonna get it if you are talking to me in the stream chat and you got pertinent questions or it's just something to touch chat about during the game yeah i'm gonna address it i'm not gonna just gloss over and ignore you guys like previously when i played phoenix right it was kind of like oh i'm just kind of isolated and i'm not interacting with stream chat at all it's me hyper focused on the game but that's not what i do anymore so, just to forewarn any, everyone, anyone who was around for those old Phoenix Wright playthroughs, I mean, that was five years ago. That was a very different me. That was back when it was like me sitting in an isolation booth playing a video game. And even though I live streamed some of that, I didn't really pay attention to you guys. It's going to be the complete opposite this time. Because these are now interactive streams. And that's the other thing is that if I do this as a nighttime stream or whatever, like, that's going to be a very chill environment. You know, where I'm just kind of relaxing and interacting with all of you. So, um, that's the deal. I'm just kind of laying that down as the ground rules that I don't know if I'm going to be doing actual voice acting. And there was going to be a lot of interaction during the gameplay of this game. Because things have changed from the way they used to be. Alright, just laying that down. I don't know if people say, oh, this is so different from how it used to do Phoenix, right? Well, I'm forewarning you, okay? Forewarning you! <laughs> okay. Um... So there you go. So, today, the premiere, four plus hours of Phoenix Wright Trials of Tribulations right here on the stream. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Reminder that anything that I stream, I archive and record in hour-long segments, and I upload that to my YouTube gaming channel, DSP Gaming. So if you miss any portion of today's stream and you want to get caught up on the fly afterward, you can head over to DSP Gaming and get caught up. Later tonight, I'll be doing a second stream. That stream will start around 6.45 p.m. Pacific Time, and it will be... MLB The Show 19, a game that I very much enjoyed playing. Um, it's a more, much more relaxed, chill atmosphere because it's just me basically swinging at baseballs and, and fielding balls, and there's not much to it, even though it does have a few dialogue choices that make it kind of almost like Mass Effect in a way. Um, it's pretty much been the same thing over and over and over ad nauseum. And I have an insanely good batting record, yet the game still didn't call me up to the majors, which is hilarious. People are watching this, and they're like... Why does the game still have you in the minors if you have a batting average that's better than, like, people in the major leagues? This is stupid as hell. And I agree. It seems to me like they pre-programmed the game to do a certain thing. And so I'm not promoted yet for whatever reason. However, I'm hoping that happens tonight. It looks like we were on track to do it. And it just didn't happen yet. Um, So that's going to be tonight around two hours of MLB chill fun. Keep in mind, those streams are very interactive as well. Mostly just you guys talking with me while I'm swinging a ball. So I uh, hope you'll join me for that. Now... Tomorrow, everyone, Wednesday, is completely up in the air. And allow me to explain what I mean because I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, okay? So, here's the deal. I beat Sekiro yesterday early. Like, everyone had uh, suspected that I was going to get stuck on the final boss of Sekiro for hours and hours and hours. And I wasn't going to be able to beat him. And it was going to be like this big ordeal where it might take me like a week of streaming to beat the guy. Because other people who played Sekiro had tons of problems with the final boss. Even people who apparently are like huge fans of Soulsborne games are saying that they took them like two to four hours to beat the final boss. I beat the final boss of Sekiro in 15 minutes. So you can imagine that completely threw my schedule for a loop. I was like, I, wow. After all the buildup and all everyone, what everyone told me was going to take forever... I pretty much beat him easily. And that's right. Mirai Masaki says, The final boss of Super Mario RPG, who I played last night, took longer than the final boss of Sekiro. It did. The final boss of Super Mario RPG took me longer than Sekiro. So, that being said, now I have all this open time because I thought, oh, I was going to play Sekiro till like next week when the new releases come out. But I beat it already. So, here's what happened. I played about uh, an hour of Sekiro New Game Plus, and I was turboing through it. I was slaughtering the bosses. I was kicking a major ass. All right. Um, and now I'm up to Lady Butterfly. I didn't fight her yet, but I can fight Lady Butterfly and then continue on with the game. And the question is, do you guys want to see me continue on with Sekiro New Game Plus? Or are you guys all burnt out on Sekiro and you want to see me do something else, right? Because here's the thing. Tomorrow, I pretty much have an open streaming day, okay? So what else could I do? I could do Sekiro New Game Plus or... I could start up a Donkey Kong Country 3 playthrough. As you remember, in the month of March, I played both Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2. It was the first time I had ever played either of those games. And yes, they are very difficult and challenging, but I got through them and I did enjoy playing them. Um, and so Donkey Kong Country 3 is available as the third in the original trilogy, and I could play that. I know some people have been asking me, when am I going to do it? Well, I could start that up tomorrow, okay? Or 
There's another game that came out this week. It comes out, came out today. And I am on the fence about even trying it because I heard really nothing about it up until the day that it released. And what I really want to do is wait a day here for people to give out their opinions on this game. The game I'm speaking about is World War Z. Now, World War Z was a movie years ago. I mean, it's an old movie at this point. What is it, like five plus years old or something like that? And it's surprising to me they even made a game on world, about World War Z. You know, like why did they make this game? It has like like uh, it basically does doesn't mean that it, 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 I don't understand. If you're gonna have a, t- a movie tie-in game, you've got to come out around the time of the movie. You know, five years later, who the hell even remembers World War Z? Not many people, right? Um, so it's weird to me now. People are saying that apparently this game is similar to Left 4 Dead. Okay? If that's the case, that's good. Left 4 Dead was great. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 were some of my favorite games when I started off on YouTube 10 years ago. Incidentally, that was one of the first games I played was Left 4 Dead 1, and then, of course, Left 4 Dead 2 came out, and I covered that. I really enjoyed those games a ton. I thought they were really great co-op experiences and just a ton of fun. Um, But, but... I'm on the fence about this game for two reasons. Number one, um, it's a co-op game. And if I'm playing like like with random matchmaking with randoms, you never know what you're going to get. Plus, as you guys know, sadly, when I do random matchmaking in a team-based game, people tend to harass the shit out of the people on, on the team and send them nasty private messages saying slanderous shit about me, which just derails the whole thing because if they start saying talking about that stuff over the mic, now the whole stream is fucked up, right? Um, so typically when I do co-op like that, then I have to mute the ch- voice chat. And if you're doing a co-op game with muted voice chat, it kind of takes away a lot of the experience. You know what I mean? That's number one. Number two, the game's 40 bucks. All right. 40 bucks. And I don't know if I want to drop $40 on a game that I might play once or twice tops and never play again. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of ifs. A lot of ifs and, and, and uncertain things about this game that are making me kind of skeptical about getting it, okay? So, let's see what happens. What I want to do is wait. I want to wait over the course of today, and I want to get feedback from people who play this game and see what people think. So, oh, by all means, if you play World War Z, tell me what you think about the game. Send me your feedback. Send me your opinion. I'm going to judge whether or not I play World War Z at all based on your opinions, okay? Okay. <clears throat> um <clears throat> all right so here's the deal tomorrow is completely up in the air completely up in the air um and so i don't know you know what i'm going to be doing tomorrow what i may do is i may make a poll on twitter tonight and the poll might say what do you want to see on wednesday do you want to see Sekiro new game plus do you want to see the start of Donkey Kong Country 3, or do you want to see me try out World War Z? And depending on what wins that poll, will probably determine, <clears throat> excuse me, what I end up doing as tomorrow's main gameplay stream. Okay? Fair enough. And tomorrow night, Wednesday night, I'll be doing Minecraft. I haven't played Minecraft in a long time now. The last time I played Minecraft, I had one of the most productive streams I've ever done in Minecraft. I mined a ridiculous amount of diamond. I made a full diamond armor set, and I enchanted the armor set with so much awesome enchantments that not only am I, like, damage impervious and everything, but I could go underwater. I have the ability to to respirate underwater and have extended underwater breathing. Um, So uh, what I think I'm going to do tomorrow night is check out a temple, an underwater temple, which is one of the things I've wanted to do since the start of the game and never did. So tomorrow night should be a pretty interesting Minecraft stream. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Now, what, Thursday is my day off. All right. Thursday is this week of my day off. And then I'm back on Friday. And what am I doing on Friday? Probably I'm going to do a second major stream of Phoenix Wright. That way I'm a good eight hours into the game, a good chunk before Phoenix Wright ends up becoming kind of a back burner game, a, a late night stream game. Um, And then we'll see. You know, we'll see this weekend. It all really depends on what you guys vote for tomorrow. Because if you vote for Donkey Kong, I keep playing that, right? If you voted for World War Z, maybe I'll check that out. And I'll keep balancing that stuff with chill streams at night. Keep in mind, next week, Tuesday of next week, is the release of Mortal Kombat 11. Humongous release. Everyone's really hyped and excited for it. And these NetherRealm fighting games are so good because not only 
Do they cater to the competitive crowd with a wide variety of characters and styles to play said characters? But also, they have tons of offline content. You've got a robust story mode that's always super fun to play through. You've got the challenge towers and the crypt to go through. It's a ton of fun, man. So I'm very excited for Mortal Kombat 11 this uh, Tuesday next week, one week from today. Okay? And then, of course, you know, later on that week, there's also going to be Days Gone. So we've got a lot going on in April. We do. We absolutely do. It's just that right now, it's not that much going on this week in particular. But next week, things are going to pick up huge. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited too. All right. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much the schedule for the next one to two weeks. And I hope you're excited for it. And uh, thank you. But be sure to let me know if you play World War Z and what you think. And also be sure to vote on a Twitter poll tonight on what I'm going to be playing tomorrow. Because it will shape the, the schedule for basically the whole weekend. Okay? Alrighty then. Alright, now ladies and gentlemen. I want to say thank you very much for all of your support. I want to say thank you for... Uh, you know, being awesome. For, for being here with the streams every day with me. And hanging out with me. And supporting me in, in all the ways that you do. I love doing this for a living, um, and I appreciate that. And if you love my daily live streams and all the on-demand videos that I put out on YouTube and you want to step up and support in a way rather than just being a, a, a regular viewer, you can. And there's many ways you can. The first is checking out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil where your monthly pledges will earn you personal perks. In particular, this month, if you're a $5 pledgee, and if we do hit the sub goal this month to do the special event, which I'm going to mention in just a few minutes, you'll be able to have priority access to nominate and vote on games for the upcoming Viewer's Choice event, all right? But there's many other things you can get. Just give it a look. Patreon.com forward slash DarkSideFill, and thanks to anyone who pledges. I appreciate it. I also have a Teespring store, and here comes the new title card for that, which is funny that it came up at this point. Um, <clears throat> DS uh, all kinds of DSP gaming merch. Um, T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all kinds of stuff. And, in fact, today I'm wearing one of the shirts. I felt that today... Being that I was going to be playing Phoenix Wright, a game that I've played over the course of my 10 years as a content creator, I wore my 10 years of Dark Side Phil shirt on the stream. This is just one of many designs that you can get over on my Teespring shop. If you buy something, obviously you get a really high quality collectible and, you know, it helps me out a little bit. So thanks to anyone who contributes. Okay. Now, if you're here live on the stream, all right, and you would like to contribute live and get a shout out for your contribution you can if you either cheer sub or tip during today's live stream i will give you a shout out live okay um as you see we have a stream stats leaderboard that is in effect excuse me i'm drinking the seltzer water so i'm getting gassy um <laughs> um we got a stream stats leaderboard in effect where i'll be tracking things like total number of subs and the current top cheerer and top tipper of the day so it's a way for you to get extra recognition all right in addition we actually have the cheering leaderboard that's integrated into twitch itself um and this uh, uh it is you can be seen above the twitch stream chat i'll be doing a shout out uh for the top cheerers of the week in in just a few minutes here okay so many ways for you to contribute and to help out um we are trying to hit a sub goal this month we're trying to hit 600 subscribers if we hit 600 subscribers this month we're going to be doing a viewer's choice event it's the first time i've ever done one like this and you might say so what is uh, this viewer's choice event well basically if we hit 600 subs this month over the course of may everyone's going to be able to nominate and vote on games <clears throat> that they want to see me play and what i'm going to do is take those nominations and narrow them down into say like the top 10 nominations and then we're going to have a public poll that everyone's going to vote on to determine what is the next uh you know viewer's choice playthrough you guys will pick what game do you want to see me play on stream and on youtube all right Typically, these viewers' choice events end up being very interesting. I mean, this Phoenix Wright game I'm playing today is because of a, a, a similar event with patrons. This new one is going to be open to everybody. So, it behooves you to subscribe to the channel. In fact, if you guys didn't see in the stream chat, we've got a new emo just for the Phoenix Wright playthrough. It's the Objection 2-parter emo. Um, so, a brand new one just for this playthrough. If you like Phoenix Wright and you want to use the Objection emo during the playthrough... Uh, this is an incentive to subscribe, right? So what do you get for subscribing? You get access to all of my emotes. You don't have to watch advertisements when I take ad breaks during the stream. And you get a cool chat crown badge to show how long you've been a supporter, okay? So many benefits to subscribing to the channel. Um, Outside of all that, I don't have much else to say plugs-wise. I just want to say thanks to anyone who even considers contributing. 
It's your contributions that keep me going and allow me to keep doing this, uh, you know, for a living. So thank you very much. All right. Let's get the shout out, shall we? Let's get the shout outs for those who have contributed already. Okay. Let's go over here and scroll on down. All right. So we actually start off today with Purio Niku, who cheered and said, as someone who started watching your channel in 2012 and became a huge fan of the Phoenix Wright playthroughs, I always wanted, I always wanted you to try the next game, whether there was downtime. Um... Hope you can still have fun with it now. Yeah, I mean, it's been over five years since I played one of the mainstream Phoenix Wright games, and it's been just under five years. No, more than five years. No, under five years. Because people say it was October 2014, right? So about four and a half years since I played Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. So it's been a while. Um, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy this, you know, especially because we know how long these playthroughs can be. I certainly hope that you guys will enjoy this. You'll be around, you'll be supportive, we'll all enjoy it together. It's the first time I'm doing it as a live interactive stream. I've never done Phoenix Wright like this before. It's always been me kind of playing the game. And even if I streamed it, just kind of ignoring you guys. Um, this should be interesting, to say the least. Okay? <clears throat> Alright, so thank you, Purio Niku. Appreciate that. B-Boy Cyclone um, has subscribed to the channel for 30 months. And says, 30 months hype, congrats on your marriage, bro. Thank you very much, B-Boy Cyclone. <clears throat> Okay, uh, K Styles, 1998, uh, subscribed for 29 months. He says, this Phoenix Wright is the best of the trilogy. Yes, the Honorable Judge Santa Claus is still the judge. Plus, almost everyone from the other two games will make a return for the ultimate climax. Well, there you go. And then K Styles did a 200-bit cheer. So that makes K Styles the top cheer of the day. Let's get him up there on the leaderboard before we continue on here with shout-outs. Oops, 200. 200 bit cheer. There we go. Okay, thank you, K Styles. Appreciate that. All right, continuing on. Lou. I can't even pronounce this name. I'm sorry. Someone tipped a dollar <clears throat> and says, I am from France, Mon ami. I have two questions. Why not use Instagram story for random pictures and videos? And if you were younger, uh, what would you advise your current self in terms of managing your finances? Um, well, a couple things. All right, first of all, Instagram story. I don't even know much about it. I know they added this thing to Instagram. I think it was last year. I'm not even 100% sure. Um, I don't really know how it works. And the truth of the matter is, I barely use Instagram. Like, this year, I used Instagram, uh, I think, one picture. And then when I went on my trip to Connecticut. And that was it. You know, like, the, before then, the last picture I did was something at a Christmas. So... I don't really use Instagram that much. Um, it's not a big deal. Like, I understand it has all these things, stories, or whatever. It was one thing when years and years ago I took pictures of everything. I don't do that anymore. As, as you guys know, I try to separate my personal life from my, my streaming life, work, and, and personal life balance. Um, <clears throat> I think it makes more sense um, to do it that way because, you know, I don't want that crossover and I don't want negative things from work carrying into personal life so i really don't use instagram that much anymore all right um so the bottom line is i don't think it's that big of a deal i appreciate the suggestion but i don't think i would really make use of it uh as of as for advising my current self about finances and everything the thing is it, you couldn't do that like i'll give you an example if it was 20 uh 2011 right and i came back in time to 2011 phil and i said 2011 phil Listen, YouTube's going to fall out. The bottom's going to fall out. And what you need to do is you need to diversify more quickly. You need to jump on the live streaming bandwagon even earlier while you're still white hot popular. So that way, people will watch you both on live streaming sites and on YouTube. So if, when YouTube does fall apart, which it will, and you have nothing to do with it, you'll, you'll have basically already jumped into the streaming. Because the thing is, I didn't become a full-time streamer until 2017. And certainly not to say that... <clears throat> um, certainly not to say that the streaming hasn't been successful. It is. I mean, my live streaming on Twitch is my main source of income and it's incredibly successful. But I think that if I had started live streaming back when I was really popular, yeah, I would have blown up. I would have been one of the big streaming guys. You know what I mean? Because there's guys on here, like I'll give you an example, Dan's Gaming. That guy was one of the earlier guys to do live streaming with gaming, and he's humongous. He was one of the originators. 
and he's still around huge, you know, and, you know, more power to him. He saw the trend and said, I need to start doing this right away. And he jumped into it and boom, he exploded and became one of the giant guys, right? Um, if I had started live streaming, you know, back then, I think that things would have turned out a lot better overall. Because then when YouTube fell out, which it did, I would have been like, who cares? I'm already big on Twitch, you know, who gives a shit? But it was more like YouTube fell out, then I had to rush over to Twitch and try to salvage everything. Um, but who would have known that? <clears throat> you know what I mean? There's no way you could predict any of that. And that's what they think. Like, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, But back then, you don't know what's going to happen. Back then, it was like YouTube was insanely popular. YouTube was ginormous. It was much bigger than any live streaming or anything. So how the hell would you have known what was going to happen? That YouTube internally, their management would be so piss poor and automate everything and make the whole fucking website fall apart into a toxic mess. You never would have predicted that, you know? So, yeah, you know, I'm not going to go into massive detail about this. All right. The Love Condo, to me a dollar, says, if one wants to visit America for holiday, what would you advise in terms of security, devices with pirated movies, and preparation to have a smooth immigration procedure? What? <laughs> I know nothing about any of that. I've lived in America my whole life. I've never been like a tourist. I mean, yes, when I travel to other states or whatever as a tourist, there are certain precautions that I take, you know, you always make sure that if you're gonna, if you're on a flight, you're wearing comfortable clothes, but you're also wearing clothes where you don't have loose pockets and shit, where things can easily be stolen. Um, if you're in a big city, you basically pay your pay your own mind, and you don't freaking get distracted by people on the street who then may have someone come pickpocket you and stuff. But you know, I don't know anything. You're like, I'm not a travel aficionado. I certainly don't know anything about the immigration process in the United States. You're asking the wrong dude. So I appreciate the dollar tip, but I have no idea, and I can't really help you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. The Honest Troll cheered. He says, finished your podcast. My podcast was from Sunday, by the way. It covered my entire Connecticut trip. He says, great to know that your mom was able to talk, uh, talk some sense into you regarding your finances and the like. But this is things that fans and detractors alike have been telling you for months, and most of the time you shot them down. The difference here, the honest troll, this is be very, very honest with you, is my mom fully 100% understands my full perspective of everything because I tell her everything behind the scenes, including my personal life and everything. Um, <clears throat> and she basically, you know, we had a long, drawn out, two plus hour conversation about all of this that allowed me to kind of understand, okay, with how things are currently, this, it, this makes sense. Versus someone randomly cheering on a random stream, hey, Phil, you should stop being a full-time streamer and get a job. Um, that's completely different. That's not even in the same realm. And it's hilarious that someone would think that that's exactly the same thing because it's not. And you should just stop trying to... Because what it is is, well, I told Phil eight months ago that I don't think that he could be a full-time streamer and he should go get a job. So, obviously, I was right all along. No, you weren't. In fact, you're completely wrong. Because I can't even do that right now anyway. <laughs> but that's what people do. Is they, oh, well now, because Phil had a talk with his mom and determined that in the long term that he probably can't stream for the rest of his life full time, that I was right all along. Uh, no, you weren't. Not at all. You were not even close to saying the same exact thing. So uh, you can stop trying to pat yourself on the back and stroke your e-dick because you had nothing whatsoever to do with that process at all. Like I said, it was a completely different thing where my mom and I talked all about all the different facets of my life and my, my now my marriage with Kat and our lives moving forward and everything. And, you know, I kind of came to a realization over time d d d based on factors, all right? Not based on someone sending me a random cheer somewhere or, you know, saying something on stream chat. So, no. Sorry, not the same. Stop that. Okay. Last Rambo cheer. He says, I know you stopped playing VR games, but I miss your playthroughs of them because they break the, bol the bold. I think you might say break the mold. Why not make a Patreon goal for it since it'll be paid for and not worry too much on Twitch of Twitch interaction? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, because I'm going to be very honest with you. No one really is going to be pledging to Patreon to hit goals anymore. And I realized this, you know, last year when I basically integrated all my stuff and changed it from Patreon to Twitch-based goals every month that... There's very little I'm going to be able to do to motivate anyone to pledge to Patreon anymore besides people who just want to help on a monthly basis or maybe get some of the perks. 
um, doing events based on Patreon just will not work anymore. They just won't. If I was an on-demand content creator for YouTube, they would. But I'm a live streamer. My livelihood is based on Twitch interaction. That's what I focus on. So now saying, oh, I'm going to do an event randomly that has nothing to do with Twitch interaction. It's not going to work. It's going to fail miserably and no one's going to support it financially on Patreon. That's number one. Number two, that would mean taking a, a time away from being an interactive streamer, which is what I need to focus on. I need to focus on being the interactive streamer. I'm putting out an interactive product that you guys like so you'll come back every day. Oh, all of a sudden, randomly, Phil for a week is not going to pay attention to stream chat. That's not going to fly. You know what I mean? It's just not. So, sorry, PSVR games. If they, Let me put it this way. If there were a killer app, if there were a game on PlayStation VR that was so good that it was a must-play, cannot-miss game, this is the make-or-break game for VR. If you play it, you're going to be blown away by VR and want to play VR all the time. That's never happened. All the games for VR end up being gimmicks. They end up being flash in the pan, a little bit of success here or there, and then no one ever talks about them again. The bottom line is I haven't played the PSVR for uh, now, at this point, two years. The last game I played on PSVR was Resident Evil 7 in January of 2017. Guess what? No one has cared that I don't do VR. Everyone's like, well, it doesn't matter. You missed nothing. The games for VR are all fluff. They're all stupid. You're right. VR is a gimmick. I've said this when VR launched. I said it before VR launched. I said it's a gimmick. It's just like motion controls. It's just like the Kinect. It's just like every other stupid gimmick that everyone falls for and runs out and buys in the hype of the dumbass gaming media to hype this shit up to pretend like it's important so that they can have something to write about. It's a waste of fucking time. All right? It is. <clears throat> it's a waste of time. Okay? There's no reason to focus on this shit. And uh, the, to sacrifice my interactivity with my stream to put on a stupid headset you know, and walk around, have a sweaty fucking forehead and sweaty eyeballs to play this stupid thing and then feel queasy. It's not worth it. It's a waste of time. It was fun for the two months that I did it at launch to mess around with it. And then I decided to become an interactive streamer and the whole thing just died. I don't need this anymore. It's a dumb gimmick. I don't need, you know, it's kind of like the same thing with the Nintendo Labo, you know, last year. I could have dropped, no lie, about $500 to buy all the card cardboard shit for the Labo. And I would have sat here on the floor of my fucking office, miserable, trying to build cardboard shit for hours on end, which would have been some of the most boring fucking streams you guys have ever seen in your life. Or I said, I could just skip this stupid gimmick and not do it because it's a waste of everyone's fucking time and I can play games that I enjoy. And guess what? I did and it worked out fine. You know, the days of me wasting time on this garbage are over. You know, like there was a time when I was making ridiculous amounts of money on YouTube and I could afford to buy every stupid accessory and every dumb gimmick and I would basically rip them all a new asshole. That was great for that era, but that era has passed. I, I don't have this kind of crazy disposable income to drop on shit. I just don't have money to buy VR games willy-nilly that I'm going to play a couple times and never play again and no one's going to care about. You know, I don't have money for this shit and I want to do interactive fun streams of games I enjoy. So the answer is no. There you go. Uh, Last Rambo Charity says, you should play World War Z and try it. We would like your opinion of it. Well, as I've said, Last Rambo, I am considering it. What I need to know is, is it good enough? Is it good enough to play? And Because it's 40 bucks. So is this a game that I'm going to play and I'm going to hate it because it's co-op only and I'm playing with randoms and I don't have voice chat on because of trolling and it's just boring as shit? Or is this a game that I'm going to jump in and have a lot of fun like I did with Left 4 Dead? I don't know. And I'm curious. Uh, the other thing is, you know, maybe if I played it co-op with view with viewers, it would be better. But then the viewers have to buy this fucking game. <laughs> See what I mean? So I don't know. I'm I'm considering it. Um, middle class liberal softy has subscribed for eleven months in a row. Thank you very much. And he says, hold on a second. He says, congrats on the wedding, Phil. Won't lie, but I got a bit emotional listening to your special podcast the other day, and also Phoenix Wright for the win. Please do the voices. As I said, I don't know if I'm doing the voices. <clears throat> it's a different time, right? Oh, uh, Saddam Hussein tipped me $2 and asked, will I ever play RuneScape? Well, Saddam, probably not. Is it RuneScape a MMO? I mean, I could be wrong. I think it is, right? Um. So if that is the case and it is an MMO, um, then the answer is no. But I don't know much about RuneScape. 
But thank you, Saddam. <laughs> thank you from, from the pits of hell where you're roasting forever. Thank you very much for the $2 tip. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, let's see here. Right board marker. Subscribe for four months. It says, keep doing what you're doing, Phil. Don't let financial issues get you down. Um, at this point, I'm done talking about them. And if you haven't noticed, there's no reason for me to talk about them anymore except you guys keep bringing them up. So the less you bring it up, the less I'll talk about them. We're back to normal. Real Talk Mod Me cheered and said, so you were talking about how you would have jumped to Twitch if you knew it was going to blow up. Mariah Masaki made a good point and said that you didn't know that YouTube would blow up, but you jumped to it. Is it because you became complacent? Huh? What? I don't even understand what that means. How you jumped to something because you were complete? What? I don't understand what you mean when you say you jumped to YouTube. I didn't jump to YouTube at all. I, would, I started off on YouTube just dicking around, doing very short, you know, short gameplay videos with a camera as, as just a silly hobby to, to kill time. Um, I didn't jump to YouTube to do anything. Um, I'm very confused. I don't know what this comment means. I'm sorry, but I can't answer it because I don't understand it. So, all right. I received a $2 tip from an anonymous person who says, mark your calendar. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 comes out July 19th. Holy shit, I'm putting that on my calendar right now. July 19th. Good stuff. Okay. All right, it's on the calendar. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again here today. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is one of the best co-op games, in my opinion. Like, 1 and 2, I loved both games as co-op playthroughs. And I, w I can't wait for 3. And I'm hoping that some of you, the viewers, will actually have a Switch and have a buy this game and want to do co-op with me. Because I'm very excited to do, uh, do this game and do full co-op. So... Yeah, let's do it. Let, I'm, I'm very that summer. That's gonna be a good summertime playthrough. When otherwise there's nothing else going on. You know, Marvel is hot right now. All the Marvel characters, the Marvel movies are about to have. Marvel Avengers Endgame is about to come out and everything. So very excited and hopefully uh, it turns out to be a really good game. I hope so. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see here. T Dubs cheered. He says, "I'm sure you received my feedback email. I might start sending them once a month." Yes, I did. T Dubs and thank you for that. I always appreciate viewer feedback on anything i read every single viewer email that i get he says keep doing what you're doing on twitch it's hard to look 10 years ahead when no one knows what will be the next big interactive live platform it might evolve into something else and you might evolve as well you're absolutely right t-dubs you know when i started on youtube no one even knew what twitch was because it didn't exist it was justin tv and you know who the fuck would have thought streaming on something called justin tv would blow up into an insanely huge interactive medium that everyone loves now um you know, YouTube 10 years ago was the thing. And who would have predicted that YouTube would have fallen the fuck apart and just basically been a website everyone hates now? Uh, like, it really has to go on a full 180. Um, <clears throat> so it's interesting to see how things change over time, isn't it? Thank you for the cheer. Uh, Shadow King 236 has resubscribed for 16 months. Says, booyah. Thank you very much, Shadow King. Hodor Targ cheered. He says, I'm happy for, for your mom watching your son get married. Um, but all every mom also wants grandkids. <laughs> uh, guess what? Kat and I don't want kids. It's that simple. You know, I'm old. I'm 37 years old. I'm an old wrinkly grandpa already here. I'm already at the age where I should be drinking prune juice and, you know, wearing the pens. I can't be having kids now. This is nuts. I can barely hold my continents every day. <laughs> All right, but no, we have no plans for kids. All right, we have no plans for kids. Um, T Dub shared again. He says RuneScape would be a nice chill late night summer stream if Minecraft starts. Minecraft, excuse me, starts to get slow. Um, so we'll see. Um, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, again, if it's an MMO, I probably wouldn't play it, and I don't know much about it anyway. All right, and Prez Vegeta subscribed for three months and says, let's do this. Thank you, Prez Vegeta, for the resub. All right, so did I update everything properly? I think I did. Let's check on sub count now. RuneScape is an MMO. I was correct. Ellipsian has just confirmed it. All right, well, yeah, I don't know if I want to play it then. 
All right, we're up to 498 subs, guys. This is good. This is good. The reason this is good is because we lost a ton of subs in the week I was away. But in the two days I've been back, we almost got them all back. Because I believe I was at, like, low 500s when I went on break. So, we've got most of the lost subs back already. And, by the way, with all the new content, you know, Mortal Kombat 11 and Days Gone coming up, I guess we're, we're going to get a spike, which will be good. So, all right, everybody. Um, I think it's time. I think it's time to end the pre-stream. Actually, oh, I almost forgot. I want to do a shout-out to the cheerers. My bad. I want to do a shout-out to all the top cheerers so far this week, okay? So, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and give shout-outs to the top cheerers of the week. All right? We actually have a triple tie for 8th place between X Legacy 214, Uncanny But, and it cut off his name, which sucks. I can't read the rest of his name, but in, I guess Uncanny. Oh, Uncanny But Dandy, that's his name. And Bagel Goose. So, all three, triple tie for 8th place, Okay. Then we've got Golden Colts in 7th place. Yoshino Lover in 6th place. In 5th place, we've got Insomniatic Meat. In 4th place, Judicious Echoes. 3rd place goes to Vote Democrat. 2nd place this week is... Actually, there's... Wow! This has never happened before. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie for 1st. I don't think this has ever happened. A tie for 1st place... I, very rarely, if ever, have I seen this happen. We have a tie for first place between Quack and Apple Peacock. They're actually tied at a thousand bits each. So that's very surprising. Um, uh, excuse me. So, pretty cool. Thank you guys for your support. I appreciate that very much. And, um, again, reminder, if you cheer, sub, or tip during today's stream, I will give you a shout-out. This is a narrative-based game, so there'll be tons of opportunity for me to give you shout-outs because I'm just reading text. Um, you know, top cheerer, top tipper will make it right there up on the top of the leaderboard. All right? And uh, if you need... By the way, I should I should start being more general instructions. If you need instructions on how to do these things, like, for example, how to cheer, you can type exclamation point cheer into the stream chat, and it brings up a command that, that explains the whole system. If you want to know how to sub, exclamation point sub. If you want to know how to tip, exclamation point tip. Okay, all those things, all those commands in the stream chat bring up the explanations so that I don't, you know, you don't, if you're confused or whatever, you can understand how to do it. All right, I almost never say that. So, <clears throat> okay. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I think we're going to end the pre stream and we're going to begin with, oh, hold on. The Void. Just t tip me a dollar and says you should make a scrubs sent to ban world counter for people banned the that day to discourage detractors. Listen, some people celebrate that stuff. I don't, you know. For me, a, 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 one of the most successful days would be a day I don't have to ban anybody. A day when everyone just came by and had fun and no one came in to be a dick and insult others or insult me or derail the stream chat or basically try to start drama. You know, a day when we could all just have a nice chill day. And no one has to be moderated is probably the best ideal day. Um, I don't know if we'll ever have a day like that, quite frankly, because we know human nature is to just fuck with people. But, um, you know, I don't celebrate that stuff. So, no, I'm not going to do it. Oh, a counter of how many people were banned today. Because the other thing is, all that's going to do, that's going to incite people to make more troll accounts and say more ridiculous things to get banned to make the ban counter go up. So, sorry, I'm much smarter than that, and I'm not doing it. Okay. Thank you to Firm High Five, who did 100 Bit Cheer. He says, have you tried the new orange or vanilla Coke? Congratulations on your wedding. Well, thank you for the congrats. Uh, no, I don't. I didn't even know it existed. So, um, see, the thing is, I don't really buy soda. I don't go out and buy a bottle of soda to drink at home or anything like that. If I'm going to have soda, it'll be because I'm out already. And I'm, I'm at a restaurant or maybe a quick fast food place. Um... And a lot of the fast food places around here have what's called the Coke, what is it called? The Coke Freestyle Machine. And that means you can get whatever kind of Coke you want. So you could get, like, vanilla orange Coke just from the machine. It adds the flavorings to the basic Coke. Like, I like one of the ones that I like to get is Cherry Coke. Or you could get Cherry Dr. Pepper, which is really good. Um, and it just adds the cherry flavoring to your regular soda. So, I don't, you know, this, is like, orange vanilla Coke isn't even new to me. Like, that's something that I can get if I go to certain restaurants around here. You know what I mean? Um, 
but yeah, I don't I don't really drink soda that much. Very very not often at all. So, Jack Spartacus says resubscribe for twenty five months. He says, oh, I subbed last night Twitch. Yeah, sometimes Twitch has a has a delay between when you actually resub and when that resub will show up. I don't know why. I know it's weird, but it does. Sometimes there's a weird delay. Um, and I guess you saw it, but thank you very much for resubbing Jack. Super Blind Man, what's up, man? He did a 500 bit cheer. That makes Super Blind Man the top cheer of the day. He says, I'm here for the Phoenix. Let's do this thing. Give it all you've got, DSP. All right, let's 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 update that leaderboard with Super Blind Man now at the top cheering spot. Thank you, Super Blind Man. That is 500 bits. Thank you, sir. Uh, Lady Morag has subscribed for 27 months in a row. Thank you very much for 27 months of support, Lady Morag. Um, T-Dubs cheered. He said, before I forget, congrats on your wedding, Phil. Thank you very much, T-Dubs. Appreciate that. Freddie Lamar Bosley did a 100-bit cheer. And he says, can you explain why you think investing in stocks is gambling? No, we're not going to derail the stream and turn it into investment talk. And Adolf, Adolf, tip me a dollar. Is there no chance for you and Swaggins to patch things up? Um, I didn't have a falling out with Swaggins. <laughs> I had no falling out with Swaggins. Everything is on his end. Everything's been self-contained completely on his end. Um, he never came to me to talk about anything. He just completely went off the rails by himself. So all his problems are internal. If he ever solves his problems and wants to come back and talk to me and consider, you know, you know, coming back or whatever, that's fine. But everything that's happened is on his side. <laughs> like, there's never been, oh, I'm, I'm angry at Swaggins, and now I'm, you know, I don't want him to be be on the streams or be a mod anymore. I'm not. No, no, this all happened on his end. So that's what I mean when I hear weird shit about, oh, he's angry or you and so He didn't say a word to me, and, you know, this isn't anything that we ever talked about, so he's got to solve his own shit, you know? Um, X Legacy cheered and said, Objection! Let's do this thing. That's right. Let us do this thing. All right. Okay. All right, guys. It's now time to end the pre-stream. All right? And then it's time to begin with Phoenix the Light. Trials and Tribulations. We'll see how good it is. I'm also curious to see this HD collection, if they didn't, like, did they improve the graphics or whatever? I don't know. We're going to find out. All right, so let's end the pre-stream. And then we're going to get started, everybody. All right. All right. <laughs>